All right, so if your first upgrade is not a stubby antenna, I don't know what it is. Let's go. All right, so now that we took care of the first upgrade on the truck, let's go ahead and move to the back of the truck and take care of those rear shocks. We're gonna use Merno shocks for the rear, so let's go ahead and slide underneath the truck and get these on. All right, so just for comparison here, this is what the original shock looks like after 136,000 miles, and you can actually see some of it leaking down here. Uh, it's got a lot of surface rust, and I can almost guarantee that it's completely shot. The, the bushings up top here are actually cracked and dried out, so this is not the best situation. These should have been replaced a while ago, so, but to remove it, all we have to do is go undo the bolt up here. It'll slide out and then the one down here below the axle will undo and then slide out and then one we'll stop the new one. So let's get after it. All right, so we got the rear shock out. Now let's go ahead and give it a pressure test to see if it actually comes back up. So not too bad, but yeah, definitely one hand pressed down. And that's all the way down. All right. Yeah, this thing is completely shot. <laughs> That's amazing. Let's go ahead and bring the new one in the picture and see how it performs. Before I threw this onto the truck, I wanted to kind of show you guys the Monroe shock here. It is like a semi-gloss black. And then the diameter of the tube down here seems to be just a little wider than the OEM spec. And then same bushings up top on the shock and down below. But I want to give this a little quick pressure test over the OEM to see if it budges any bit. Yeah, it's it's not going anywhere so you're really impressed about that that should definitely stiffen up the rear end of the truck and improve the quality of the ride so let's go ahead and get into the truck and throw these on oh and after about five minutes the oem shock is still in the same position i left it in so yeah yeah let's throw that away all right so i got the new shock in place here i'm going to head and throw the nut on down here and go ahead and finish screwing in the bolts up here and we'll be done with the passenger side rear shock and I'm gonna take care of the right side off camera but you guys get the gist these things are going on can't wait to see how the ride improves for both the front and rear of the truck now and this is what it's supposed to do right so, so I'm gonna go down nice and stiff comes back out much better all right next we're gonna take care of these headlights i already replaced the high beams on this truck with uh some ox beams 9005s but the h11s are gonna be for the low beams and this is what came out of the truck these seem pretty cheap and flimsy so we're gonna replace them with ox beams f22 series and i've used these before and absolutely love them all right so this is what they look like inside the box here they're really nice they don't come with such large capacitors so much smaller design and heat distribution really big fan of these and can't wait to get these in and check them out all right so this is for a quick size comparison here so on the left hand are the ox beams f22 series and then on the right are these i guess ebay specials that i'll be replacing today super happy with the overall design from ox beam and can't wait to see what these look like all right so super impressed with the install of these headlights super easy to do uh, i put everything back together so let's get underneath the truck and install my sway bar links and sway bar bushings that i picked up from moog to really tighten up this front end of the truck and then later on the video we'll kind of show some video of the truck driving night to see what these headlights can actually do but yeah let's get after it so we're right here underneath the passenger front tire and we're going to replace the sway bar bushing and then the sway bar link that's located right here so to do that you're going to release this bolt here the bolt behind there this will drop down you replace the bushing in here and then for the sway bar link just go ahead and loosen the bolts here and lock it in place up top there's a retaining bolt up there and this whole uh, link system will drop out. So super easy to do. Let's go ahead and get after it. All right, for what the products I'm replacing, both the bushing and this link is going to be Moog products. So this is going to be the Moog link from them and then their bushing that's right here. So let's go ahead and put those in place.
All right, so we have the sway bar bushings installed and the links on both sides of the truck. Let's go ahead and hop up and take care of the door handles on this truck. They've got some problems and also trying to go for the blackout look. So let's go ahead and take care of that. All right, so the next step is to take a plastic trim tool and you'll put it right about here. And what I like to do is take a little magnet extension and you'll kind of grab the bolt and pull it out. You don't want it to fall inside the door because that would be a headache. Got the first bolt removed. Let's go back in there and remove the second one. All right, so once those two bolts are released, what you should have remaining is going to be two door handle bolts and then three for the door panel. All right, and what I want to do here is compare my old door handle that came off the truck with the new one. They look exactly the same here. You can see on the old ones some corrosion on their springs here. But overall, very simple. Similar construction here. For the piece that broke, you can actually see it down there compared to the new one. And these are the two pieces that broke off and fell out of the door handle. And that's why that side of the door handle is so loose. Uh, so I guess it broke over time. Someone grabbed from this side of the door handle and not this side. So yeah, so that's what went wrong with the old one. But let's go ahead and get the new one into the truck. All right, so now this is cleaned up. I did notice some wear right about here and then around here where the door handle actually mates the surface. So let's go ahead and put some touch-up paint on that so we don't develop any rust over time. But yeah, just some points that I noticed here on the seal and then right here that I want to clean up before we put the door handle back on. All right, man, these door handles are looking super clean. They take about 10 to 15 minutes per door to do, um, but let's hop to the other side, take care of the driver's side. I will be doing most of this off camera, but I will talk about how to do the driver's door with that lock. But yeah, let's get after it. All right, so the process for all the other door handles are about the same, but for the driver's door side handle, all you have to do is for to remove the lock, which is right here, and there'll be a spot here for the new one is go ahead and remove the retaining clip that's right here. This cylinder will slide out and essentially you'll place it right back where it would belong in the new handle. But that is really the only difference between the door handles on this truck when it comes to installing those door handles. I am super happy with the install of these door handles. I went ahead and took care of all four sides, but next we're gonna take care of the rear differential, the front differential, transfer case, and then we'll wrap up with that transmission. Uh, I will do an oil change later on, but yeah, I just wanna take care of these fluids right now, and then at the end of the video, we'll kinda of show what the headlights look like at night. Let's go. All right, so we got the rear differential covered cleaned here. Let's go ahead and move up to the front differential and get that fluid changed. All right, so now we're here facing the front differential. The fill plug is up here. We'll go ahead and break that loose and then the drain plug is right below here. So let's get after that.
All right, so there's many ways to get this job done. You can use a squeeze bottles or a funnel, but I picked this contraption up from O'Reilly's for about $8. And honestly, it's one of those tools you don't always need, but when you need it, you truly need it. And it came in clutch today. Um, definitely worth its price in gold in terms of usability. You can control the flow here on the nozzle and then actually completely shut it off as needed to move it around. But yeah, definitely worth a worthy mention in the video. All right, so we're at the back of the transfer case and I see the drain plug here and then the fill plug looks like the seal is broken because it is leaking out a little bit. But let's go ahead and open this one up and take a look at that seal. And then we're gonna open up the drain plug and we'll check out the fluid. So while we wait for the transfer case to drain out, I got our fluid here and I put the adapter on to make the job just a little easier reaching into that fill plug. And then I'm using Napa's Dexron 6 ATF, which is your automatic transmission fluid, full synthetic. And it will take about 1.6-ish 1, 1 quarts of fluid. And then this is the fill plug, wrapped a little Teflon tape around it, and then the drain plug as well. So got all that cleaned up. Let's go ahead and put this fluid into the transfer case. All right, so I changed the transmission internal filter and external filter kind of off camera. It, honestly, it was super easy and I just wanted to get it done. It is getting late now, but we'll kind of wrap up this video talking about the wheels and tires that I got on a killer deal for this truck. And then we'll also show a video of the truck driving at night with those new headlights by Oxbeam. But this will complete the service for the truck right now. We'll do an oil change at a later period, but the oil was changed about a thousand miles ago and it's still really clean. So we'll handle that at a later time. But yeah, let's go ahead and show those wheels and tires I got for the truck and then I'll take a rip with the truck at night with his new headlights. All right, let's go. All right, I'm not sure if you noticed in the video, but I do have these 2023 High Country wheels and I did want to provide some backstory on these. So when I bought the truck a few weeks ago, they came with the original Denali wheels and some tires that were completely worn out. The Denali wheels were corroded and had seen better days. So I needed new tires for sure. And then I found the steel in marketplace for $1,500 for tires and wheels. Worked this seller down to about $1,400 for all four of them. And then I picked them up and I put them on. And I replaced the Chevrolet hubcaps with the Denali hubcaps, as you can see there. Uh, so perfect fit there. And then I sold my original Denali wheels and tires for $500. So I was able to work out under $1,000. For about $900, I was able to get all four new wheels and then some lightly used tires for the truck. So super happy with that purchase. And I just wanted to mention that for you guys. All right, so these are the low beams right now, and wow, uh, the snow does help with reflection, but the out light output on these ox beam headlights are way better than what I was working with prior. I could barely see in front of me. So let's go ahead and flip on the high beams and see what those look like. Okay, that's like a light bar. Uh, these are actually really nice. Uh, huge fan of this. So yeah, really glad we invested in the right headlights this time. So I think this gonna make a huge difference. And like I said, these are the high beams and then these are the low beams. So much, much better light output here. Um, it's actually negative two degrees. So pretty cold night here, but yeah, these lights are performing phenomenally. Really glad we did this upgrade on this truck. Can't wait for many road trips ahead. Again, thank you guys for watching. Catch you next time. Thanks.